What's going on guys, Beastly Gamer here, welcome to the channel. Today's video is about Microsoft, their first party lineup, and what we can expect in the future. Microsoft's Xbox lineup, especially when it comes to their exclusives, has been having a pretty tough time, and as you guys know recently, Scalebound was very recently cancelled indefinitely, and this has happened in the past with other Xbox IPs. I found a very interesting article and I wanted to share with you guys. I'll drop a link in the description. Microsoft's exclusive Xbox IP stable is in rough shape, and it has been for years. This has been many years in the making, but lately it seems like Microsoft's inability to get a handle on its stable of exclusive games is reaching a fever pitch. By now you've probably heard the news that Scalebound has been cancelled. The joint project with Bayonetta's Platinum Games about brawling humans and dragons scrapped after years of work, seeming like it was going to attempt to be a breakout IP for the Xbox brand. Microsoft issued a terse statement on the news after several states ran with the source rumors that the end was nigh. Quote, after careful deliberation, Microsoft Studios has come to the decision to end production for Scalebound. We're working hard to deliver an amazing lineup of games for our fans this year, including Halo Wars 2, Crackdown 3, State of Decay 2, Sea of Thieves, and other great experiences, end quote. As curious as I am about how Halo Wars 2 will turn out, Crackdown 3 is another title that seems to have gotten lost on the way to release as we've heard nearly nothing about it in ages. I'm not sure who exactly is terribly excited about State of Decay 2 when another Microsoft exclusive game, Dead Rising 4, barely made a splash just a few weeks ago in 2016. Scalebound isn't the only high profile exclusive cancellation lately either, as Microsoft has killed the Phantom Dust remake, Project Spark, and Fable Legends previously. And finally, even Microsoft's heaviest hitters barely seem to be making impacts these days. Gears of War 4 sold perfectly well and was a perfectly acceptable game, but it was all but drowned out by the big releases this year, when previously it would have been one of the biggest, most high profile titles of the year. And while Halo still might be THE Microsoft franchise, the 343 series has continually felt like a shadow of the Bungie originals, even if Halo 5 made some strides to improve. I am simply struck by how weak Microsoft's Xbox exclusive roster has been, not just lately, but for years now and things only appear to be getting worse in time. Its strongest offerings are probably niche titles like Killer Instinct and Forza, but its big series continue to underwhelm, and now the IPs have been killed off left and right. This is in sharp contrast to both Sony and Nintendo. Nintendo obviously exists on the strengths of its exclusive first party lineup, and little else, so perhaps that's an unfair comparison with almost all of its IPs having 20 plus years of strong history behind them. But Sony? I own both consoles, I play all these games, so I'm not assigned to a fanboy camp, but it's hard to feel like Sony and Microsoft have been on the same level at all the last few years. Naughty Dog has simply been a godsend for PlayStation, creating game of the year contenders or winners with every single Uncharted installment and proving they can grow beyond that series with The Last of Us. New installments in The Last of Us and God of War are erroneous titles where the games instantly become some of the most anticipated of the year. Sony still turns out exclusives like Bloodborne, and Horizon Zero Dawn is one of the most potentially promising games of 2017. It's the scale bound that lived, you might say. You just don't see that with Xbox properties. Not anymore. Gears and Halo sequels used to command this sort of earth-stopping respect, but that has waned in recent years, and the numbered sequels have done little to truly evolve their series, handed off to new masters, desperate not to, desperate not to botch the formulas of the superior originals. And what new exclusives does Microsoft have on the horizon? They're so badly marketed and managed that most people will either forget they exist, or they don't make it or release it at all, like what we've seen recently. Microsoft has now resorted to trying to act like something like Tomb Raider is now an exclusive property, slapping Laura Croft on their marketing materials when all they've done is managed to purchase a year-long exclusive access to the series. If you want to play that game, Sony has done well to position themselves as the console for multiplayer series like Call of Duty and Destiny because of their own exclusive deals. And last but not least, Microsoft has been undercutting themselves with their new policy of releasing pretty much all of its exclusives on the PC alongside the Xbox, in effect creating a situation where true Xbox exclusives don't even exist anymore. Why does all this matter? Because Microsoft has done an incredibly poor job of making the case of why gamers should own an Xbox over a PlayStation in the last few years. Yes, it's true that the higher price point, connect bundling, and always on nonsense are what crippled the Xbox One from the outset, but in the years since, the console has never truly recovered, in part because it's never produced a must-have exclusive lineup. 
A common refrain is that the exclusives don't matter as much as they used to, which may be true. But when there are two consoles in direct competition with one another, with Nintendo on its own planet, which one are you going to choose? The one that keeps rehashing sequels with no real innovation and that keeps killing IPs left and right, or the one that keeps churning out exclusive Game of the Year contenders? That has been an advantage that Sony has enjoyed that no one is really talking about, but it's a large factor that must be considered. Add in the power advantage, both the original PS4 and now the PS4 Pro, and the Xbox One just doesn't measure up. It's no wonder the sales numbers reflect that. Scorpio is coming, and it could change the game if it's powerful enough. An erroneous leap forward in power might convince some to switch to the Xbox to play third-party games at the very least, even if the first-party stable isn't all that enticing. But again, Microsoft has let Sony lead for years now, and 50 plus million people now own a PS4 or a PS4 Pro and have been associating PlayStation with more power and better games for years. I know Microsoft is a huge megacorp and can afford to slack off regarding some of its sub-brands including Xbox, but to me it seems like the more time goes on, the more their gaming brands feel like it's in total disarray. This may sound overly harsh, but it's been building for years with lackluster sequels and a void of quality new exclusive Xbox IPs. Sony and Nintendo do not have this problem. It's only Microsoft, only Xbox, and it only feels like it's getting worse. Wow. Jeez, guys, um, this is this is a harsh article, and it, it's respectable. It's a respectable journalist. It's on Forbes, and I gotta say, I agree with this article. I 100% agree with the article. I love my Xbox. There's, Xbox has its place in my life. The games on the Xbox have their place in my life, and I do think State of Decay 2 is going to be better than Dead Rising 4. But the author is actually hitting the nail on the head, in my opinion. Uh, Microsoft has had some issues with its exclusives. And their IPs have just really declined over the, few, the last few years. Over the last decade, I'd say. I remember back in the day when the original Xbox came out and Halo came out, it was the cream of the crop. And for a long time, Halo was considered the king of first-person shooters, which of course, that declined. It just didn't seem like they evolved enough. These games haven't evolved. Gears of War, these games haven't really evolved. And even Gears of War 4 has a lot in common with the previous games. I mean, a ton in common. When you look at the fact that exclusives have been killed off in the Microsoft Studios more times than not now, and you do see this trending thing on the PlayStation side where companies like Naughty Dog and From Software are making these exclusives for the PlayStation that are Game of the Year contenders, that are amazing experiences. You, if you look across the table to the Xbox side and try to find the contemporaries that are there to compete against these type of games, they really don't exist. What is Xbox's Uncharted? What is Xbox's The Last of Us? What is Xbox's Bloodborne? There's so many PlayStation exclusives that are incredible. They really don't exist, at least to the same pedigree on the Xbox side. If history is any indication, it will only get worse. I think that the Xbox Scorpio will make the Xbox brand better. But to me, the thing, if I was to do anything for Microsoft, if I, if I could wave a magic wand for Microsoft to make the Xbox brand better, I would get better production. I would get better developers and better writers to create their games. They just haven't had that seminal experience. There are some really awesome games on the Xbox One. Ori and the Blind Forest, for example, is an incredible game. One of my favorite games of 2014. It was just really a special, special experience for me. But when we see games like Scalebound disappear, Fable Legends canceled, Phantom Dust, Project Spark, these exclusives that you can't really play anywhere else just dying off on the console, it does something to the ecosystem. It makes it appear less stable. It's a chilling in the Xbox side. And people who are expecting these games on the Xbox One now feel less sure that they're actually going to come out. It would be different if games like the new Spider-Man on PlayStation 4 was canceled, or if PlayStation exclusives were starting to get canceled left and right and going through development hell. But we don't see that nearly as much on the PlayStation side as we do on the Xbox side. And hopefully they can get this thing ironed out. You know, Phil Spencer's a great guy. I think he has great ideas for, for Xbox and for Xbox's future. But this article hit the nail on the head. You guys let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think that Xbox has a problem with its exclusives? And what do you think they need to do to change it? Let me know in the comments. Be sure to give a thumbs up, show support for the channel, join the Facebook group, follow me on Twitter, and you can support the channel at BeastlyGamer.com. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time.